Good morning. Uh, thank you for your time that uh, you came here uh, to talk with us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are students from VIRE program, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, who are, uh, who are um, uh, writing about this conference, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we would like to ask you several questions mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Uh, so the first unofficial question mm -hmm. is, uh, what are your feelings about this conference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I have a very, very good feeling. I think there's a lot of um, optimistic spirit. Many people coming together who find to find very concrete solutions to uh, environmental education issues. Uh, many partner organizations, many many very committed and passionate individuals, um, and it's also very very well organized the congress. So I think I, I have a very very positive feeling about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first question is: uh, What is the main goal of UNESCO? The main goal uh, of UNESCO as an organization is to um, promote peace and sustainable development, to make sure that through working together, um, the different countries in the world um, make progress towards peace and sustainable development. And in our area, where, where I work in, the objective is really to make sure that education, the way it is practiced in schools and in, in, in adult education and kindergartens, um, really allows people to learn what they need to promote sustainable development and to protect the environment. Uh, what is your role in the environmental education field? I'm, uh, uh, I'm responsible in UNESCO for education for sustainable development. And what we are doing is uh, we are working with different partner organizations and one of them is actually FEE to promote environmental education and education for sustainable development across the world. And there are various ways uh, how we do this. We try to um, convince policymakers, ministries in, in, in our mem member states, in our countries, to teach more about the environment in schools, to address issues like climate change or biodiversity and other sustainable development issues. And then we also organize, for example, workshops for uh, those who are responsible for education so they can understand how important environmental education is. Um, how did you get involved in this type of work? Um, actually, at a personal level, I've always been uh, interested in, in environmental issues. And I've always, uh, since I started to be interested in politics a long time ago, worried really about, about the pressures on the natural environment. Um, and uh, this then, through various uh, angles, uh, led me to the work that I'm doing now. Okay. Which global action area do you think uh, will be the diffi most difficult to work with and uh, which one will be the easiest? Right, right. Okay, as, as UNESCO we have identified um, five areas where we want to make progress in education for sustainable development and, and environmental education. And those five areas are policy, schools, uh, teachers, youth and local communities. and. Um, Maybe the, um, it's very, very difficult to say which one is really the most difficult and which one is the easiest. I think maybe one where we can make progress most, most quickly is maybe the schools area, because there it's very, very concrete what you can do. Uh, a school can make sure that they spend less energy. A school can make sure that um, it offers um, voluntary groups where students get engaged to protect the environment. So that's maybe something where we can make progress um, most quickly. And uh, the most difficult one, uh, it's, it's, it's hard, hard to say. I think um, uh, to, to work with policymakers and really make sure that they properly integrate environmental education into curricula, for example, that is a very, very long process and that requires a lot of energy. Okay. Uh, why are children so important? Let's go, mission and role. Why, why are children so, so important? important in because children are the new generation and when we talk about sustainable development it's really children and young people who are the ones who have to inherit the world that the, that the adults create and so we as UNESCO want to make sure that the world the children inherit in a few years is really a, a, a world where it's worth living in 
So that's why youth and children are one of our focus areas. How do you think YRE can help in UNESCO's work? Yeah, I think YRE can have a very important role because YRE is a very, very concrete and practical uh, uh, program where young people get directly involved. It's not about grown-ups telling young people what to do and how to do it, but young people themselves uh, being, being active and making a contribution. And then um, uh, a second reason is that you work for public awareness. You really, really work as journalists, as young journalists, as young reporters, and try to make sure that uh, not only the specialists and the academics understand what it's all about, but that the wider public uh, knows what it's all about. And in fact, we have, um, on a number of uh, um, occasions, worked together. We also had a YRE team at our big UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development last year in Japan. And we had a similar team like you uh, following our work and reporting on our work for our website. Uh, which countries do you feel that uh, need the, mo the biggest attention uh, in the environmental education uh, and uh, what do you advise to them? Because uh, some countries uh, don't have uh, the environmental education so developed than, than others. Yeah. For example, in my country, in Slovakia, it's uh, on the low, it's more uh, low level there than, for example, in Sweden. So what do you right. advise them? Right, right. I think, I mean, first of all, I have to say environmental education is really a responsibility of all countries, uh, really every country across the world, and we are very, very, that's very important for us to emphasize that, that, that uh, really all countries and all governments have to get have to get involved. When you ask me which are the ones that, uh, that require most attention, then um, I think it's those countries that are, that are especially vulnerable to climate change and to, and to the effects of environmental degradation, for example, uh, in UNESCO we have a group of uh, small island states and they are of course very much threatened now because of the rising sea levels and we think that they they are worth particular attention. And then also countries in Africa uh, who also uh, suffer very much from global warming and they also uh, uh, require a lot of, lot of attention. And then I think for those countries who are not as advanced maybe in and environmental education and environment and education for sustainable development as others. I think uh, what we are trying to do as UNESCO, we, we provide a space and opportunities to learn from each other. So those countries who are not as far as advanced can um, look at UNESCO's website, look at UNESCO's publications, come to our meetings, and there are many, many good practice examples how countries uh, implement education for sustainable development. And then all countries can, can learn from those examples. Would you recommend someone wanting to get through work or involved with UNESCO? Um, I think I think there are two ways of getting involved. One one is uh, get involved on a voluntary basis, and there, for example, we have a, a global network of UNESCO associated schools, and um, and you can uh, you you could, for example, start to work in your school and convince your teachers and your uh, school principal to join that network. That would be one, one concrete possibility uh, to contribute where you are to UNESCO's work. If you want to work uh, at UNESCO uh, and, and with UNESCO, I'd like to find uh, later on a job with UNESCO, I think then it's very, very good to um, have a lot of international and intercultural experience, have a, have a great dedication to UNESCO's mission, um, and, 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 and objectives and be very, very open to work in a, in a team of uh, people from many different countries. Do you also offer some internships or something like that to students? We, we offer internships normally, normally to, um, to students who are pursuing a postgraduate degree, so who have their bachelor level degree already and who are in a master's program and we have many internships for those students. Um, where in the world do you see the biggest potential for change? Right, right, right. I think I think it's difficult to say one particular country or one particular region. I think what also the Congress here has shown is that really almost all across the world there are really dedicated organizations, dedicated individuals who who make who make change happen. So I would um, personally I would find it difficult really to say there's a specific area, there's a specific um, region in the world. One thing maybe I can say is that what is, what is very encouraging is um, how active young people are. And your program is an example, but in general also, I think it, you can see it here at the, at the Congress, how passionate and, and active um, children and young people are. And that's, that's maybe an area with the highest potential for change.
So the last question is, uh, people are very happy today with uh, their style of life. Uh, they are, they have, they're used to their, uh, their comfort. Uh, do you think it's possible to change uh, their thinking globally to make some real change? Mm. But it's the only chance we have. It's it's it's, it's necessary. It's, it's absolutely necessary if we if we want to survive really uh, on, on this planet in a comfortable way. Uh, so I'm. Uh, my first answer would be that it's absolutely necessary. My second answer is that I think it is possible because you can show to people that uh, they maybe they have to give up certain things about their lifestyle, but they also gain uh, gain things. You know, if, if I if I use my car less, if I. Um, uh, if, if I live in a more uh, environmentally sustainable way, I can also gain a lot of quality of life. Okay, okay thank you for your great answers. Okay. <laughs> we are pleased to talk to you and uh, thank you for your okay, th thank, thank you for you. your interest. Thank you very much.